Hello and welcome to a chip off the old block toys. I am Jeff and today we have the train that was just released on December 1st of 2023, just a few days ago. And this is set number 21344, the Orient Express train. It has 2,540 pieces, eight minifigures, and it retails for a grand total of $299.99. Now, this isn't gonna be, you know, any other video out there. It's gonna be my kind of video. And my kind of video means we are gonna compare similar trains to this one. Now, I will start off this review by stating I saw online a lot of criticism of this train because, well, it, it can't be motorized, but it can. Um, about that, um, I put at the show, I put this on the track because we don't use the regular radius uh, turns uh, for Lego. We buy the more elongated ones. And this could clear just fine being longer. However, what happened was these pieces right here on the front started throwing themselves off. And so um, if it's going to be motorized, you got to figure out a way to keep the parts from just flying off. Anyway, I heard criticism about being motorized and the size. And some people said, well, Lego never makes a train this size. Yes, they do. And I'm going to show you which ones they have made this size and even one bigger. Anyway, let's start off by reviewing this set right here. This set is large. It is 46 inches long. That is just two inches shy of four feet. That is huge. And it's only four inches wide, which not, not too bad. And it's four inches tall, or five inches tall, excuse me. So if you're on the metric system, that equates to 116 centimeters by eight centimeters by 12 centimeters tall. So anyway, it's pretty good dimensions and it has, the eight minifigures, I'm sorry, there's no information online to tell you how many of those are unique. I believe they all are, because I don't remember seeing those in any of the set, but don't take my word for it. I don't have the world's greatest memory anyway. All right, well, let's jump in to the review of this set right here. On this channel, we always do the reviews pretty much the same. We evaluate off of five things, and then we give you a sixth overall ranking. So how it works is I give you what I think of value, creativity, playability, ease of build, and the part out value. And we do that on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being the worst, 10 being the best. Then the sixth one is I average those scores from zero to 10 and give you an overall ranking for this. So let's start it off with the value. As stated previously, this does retail for $299.99. Comes with eight minifigures. 2,540 pieces. So already you're looking at a price per piece of 11.8 cents per piece, which is just an excellent value to begin with if, if this was just a regular set. However, this is not a regular set. It has train pieces to it. It has the wheels. It, it's, it's got the other wheels back here. It's got the, um, uh, what do you call this? The, the Technic Thin um, lift arms. It's got the couplings and stuff. So it has train pieces and those are usually more expensive to begin with. So that right there tells you the 11.8 cents is a great price. And I would give value a 10 except for one problem. This thing has stickers to the tune of about 25. I don't know the exact number because I lost my sticker sheet. And the other problem I have with this set is that there are several of you who have bought the set or will be buying the set that will end up with stickers that are incorrect. Lego knows this is a known problem. They put out an article and they said, all you have to do is call customer service and they'll ship you out a new one. But this is another reason for me not to like stickers. So I will give the value only a nine on that. Now we need to move on to creativity. Creativity for this is definitely a 10. The reason that creativity is a 10 to me is because this thing looks like a steam engine. First of all, Lego did create these new uh, pieces right here. Um, these are really close to the Technic thin lift arms that they've already have, but these ones have fewer holes and the size of them. So uh, these are new. So the fact that they had to do that was great uh, for creativity. And let me separate the engine here. And let's look at the front here. Lego got so creative that right here, these pieces are actually upside down these uh, three brackets right here. And it has the front bumpers and it does have the front cylinder to just like a um, 
regular steam engine and the smokestack here. You've got the conductor's piece back here, or the engineer's piece, where they're at. That is decorated, and that looks like the controls to one. And you've got the steps to get on it right here on the sides. And you got the couplings. So creativity, like I said, it's a 10, but let's keep going because there's more cool things about this. You look at the cold tender car. I like the cold tender car. The cold tender car has got a lot of detail to it. First of all, they did provide this right here where this glides back and forth, the third, the, uh, third wheel, the middle wheel. And what that does is that it allows it to take the radiuses a lot better because Lego trains are quite tight on the turn radiuses. Um, the club that I have, we actually um, have the larger radius so that longer trains can be there. But anyway, they do have a ladder here so that that way you know they can get up there and they have the front opening right here so that they can shovel the coal here directly into the engine keep the thing going and i like how they have it contoured up here so it's not flat and the inside is indeed hollow and that is where you could put a battery pack in an engine if you if you wanted to to motorize this i'm not going to um, but you can and i would start with this right here maybe even make this a little bit longer if you have the pieces anyway um, it looks great here, and then when you come to the car, the first car you have, well, first, oh, before I open it, I like all the different cities that it goes to, and the name of the Orient Express. These are all printed pieces. The stickers are over here, and the stickers are also on the inside. I also like the wheels right here. I like how they make it look like springs here. That's an awesome touch, so that's good. And we also have the covered part here to go from one carriage to the other and we have the doors here to get on the train and off the train and these did not open very well I tried it before and they don't like closing a lot of times when you open them but anyway that's a side note there then we've got the inside the inside is where the magic is on this one I really love the interior you've got a bathroom and you've got they use the door here and the door is used as toilet paper what I find funny about that is online, I saw some people making some comments that were funny and it was that because the way that the door is shaped, the toilet paper is over, which settles the debate, Lego settled that debate and stating that it should always be over. But anyway, the stuff people come up with online does crack me up. Uh, so if we look at this here, there are actually two separate passenger cabins here. You've got a nicer one here with the lamp and a full size bed and also a picture up here and a full bathroom here you just have a little wash station not a full bathroom and you've got a double you got a bunk bed on top of each other here very narrow but uh, and also you do have a lamp and a smaller desk no couch like you do here on this side and also oh i forgot to mention the underside right here i like this here detail it looks really good so this is one car let's move on to the other car that has to do with this the other car Oh, there we go. Oof. Yep. So, this other car is this right here is the diner car. And it does the same thing where it has the passageways to the boat to the different carriages, the doors to get on. It's got the springs here and the removable roof. And when you remove the roof, what you have here is you've got two tables here with lamps and some uh, dinnerware on there, as well as a little bar here so you can get your drinks and that kind of stuff. And they also, right here, this is the sticker pattern here. I really like the sticker pattern. Even though I don't like stickers, I do like this particular sticker and what it does here, the detail that it adds. So as you can see with all the creativity, definitely a 10. The playability is a 10. And I know you're saying, but wait a minute, Chip, be consistent because on your other videos, if you can't really play with it, like a motorized and that kind of stuff, it's not a 10. Well, I'm gonna tell you why it's a 10. And that's from personal experience of what happened when I built this. Now, the Children's Gateway Museum uh, show was November 30th, December 1st, and December 2nd. And during that show, here's what happened. I bought it on the first, stood in line, took it to the show, started building it. Now, the guys in the National Model Railroad Association don't normally, Lego trains are okay, but they're not 
particularly enthused about this. When I was building this one, you would not believe how many of those members came up to me while I was building it and said, wow, that looks really cool. Oh, look at that detail. It's got the bumpers, the European style. It's got this, it's got that. And they were intrigued with the value. That's why playability is a 10. Even though you can't play with this thing, this is meant to be a collector's edition. And if I've got model railroad guys come up to me geeking out over this thing, guess what? It has the playability because you have stuff that you can do with this train and a conversation starter. So that's a 10. The ease of build though, I'm only gonna give it a seven. Now this set here, it is one booklet and 457 steps, which makes it about five, a little over five, six, five to six pieces per step. And I didn't find any uh, errors in this particular instruction book, but it is a longer build and it is a more detailed build. In fact, I made a mistake a few times, so it, there is some difficulty, so I'll give it a seven out of 10. As far, or, far as a part out value, I'll give it a nine because most of these pieces like the windows, that kind of stuff can be used everywhere else. What can't be used anywhere else is the train wheels and the couplings. Now some of those, well actually the couplings can be, but uh, these pieces, not really, um, these Technic thin arms. So I, I'm gonna give it a nine, which is not a bad thing. That means the overall part out value for this thing is a 9.0. So that is great. So now that we've gone over this train, the Orient Express, as promised in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna go over other sets that Lego has come out with. And the ones I'm gonna go over are the Emerald Knight, the Crocodile Locomotive, and the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. So let's go ahead and let's clear off this table and let's bring on the Emerald Knight. So the first set we have up for comparison is the Emerald Knight. This is set number 10194. It was released in 2009. It is hard to believe that it's been 14 years since this set has come out. I fell in love with this set the minute I saw it in the box. Had to get it. It was a must-have. I uh, was actually still in college then, getting my bachelor's degree in accounting, and I didn't have much money, but I made sure that I had the money for this one. And uh, this one has only 1,072 pieces, so even though it has a lot of detail, it uh, doesn't use a whole lot of pieces to get there. And it came with three minifigures that were all unique to this set. Now, I'd made one modification to mine. This coal tender car, I filled it with black one by one round plates and to make it look like it has a bunch of coal in it. Um, and boy, these magnets have gotten weak over time. They don't want to hold anymore. Anyway, um, just to show you, when it comes to the train engines on the length, and let's remove the car here. So if you look at it, the Emerald Knight's slightly longer, although it is approximately the same width. In fact, it is the same width. And then the coal tender cars, they are almost exactly the same on the width, although this is, or I mean the, the, the length, the width of them, uh, this seems to be eight, this is only six. So this one's a little more beefy than that one. And then if you look at the passenger cars, the passenger cars are night and day. First of all, the Emerald Knight is only six studs wide. This one here is uh, a total of eight studs wide. So it's, it's bigger. And not only that, it's longer. Um, the detail though, um, this one here, I believe, is just a little diner car, and it's very simple compared to the other one. However, they did do some custom doors here, and these have the standard train doors, but they both look good. Um, I've always wanted more cars with the Emerald Knight. You know, the thing that stopped me were these windows. These windows at one time were a dollar something a piece. I don't know what they are today. I don't even want to know. I did start building one, but because of the cost of the windows, I gave up. So anyway, that's the Emerald Knight comparison. Now let's move over to something that's similar in the same width and all that, and that would be the Crocodile locomotive. So the Crocodile locomotive is unique in that it is seven studs wide instead of the six like the Emerald Knight and the eight 
for the Orient Express. So it's right in the middle between the two of them. It does have the brick built track just like the Orient Express. Um, it is meant as a displaced piece just like the Orient Express. And this is a three year old train that was released in 2020. And it has 1,263 pieces and two minifigures, which both of them are unique to this set. Now, this is an electric train, as you can see here. And it didn't really want to stay on here that well. Uh, there really isn't much to this. Like, this comes off, but not really, because there's really not anything on the inside. And neither is there really anything on the inside of this either. This is strictly meant as a display piece. And you've got the two right here, the two minifigures. And last but not least, we do have the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. So let's bring that up on the table and let's look at that. This one here is the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. This is set number 76405. It was released last year in 2022. 5,129 pieces and 20 minifigures. 17 of them are unique to the set. Now, this one... I'm going to call it like the granddaddy of them all. Here's why. This one's much larger scale. I mean, if you look at the Emerald Knight here, right next to it, it pales in comparison to the size of the engine. I mean, it's not even near as long. It's not as tall. It's not. It, it, it's nothing. I mean, the amount of detail on this one's way much more than the Emerald Knight. Of course, the Emerald Knight retail for like what 150 or something maybe 200 and this one retails for 550 so there's a difference um but another thing is this is only six wide studs this one right here is a total of 10 studs that is huge so it's bigger in scale by far this has a much more beefier and built up ballasted track than the other ones do and they kind of do the same thing as they did on the Orient Express where this is a false top so they didn't have to fill this whole entire thing with pieces. Would have made it more expensive for something that just doesn't really add a lot of value to it. Let's set this guy aside. Um, what this guy does have, it does have this cool thing when you go like this that the wheels move. At least some of them do. It's got the same thing in the front, just like the Orient Express here. Um, it does have a engineer's compartment that is indeed all decorated out. You've got the coal tender car, which is much bigger than this little coal tender car. Look at that, pales in comparison. You have a great passenger car. This has a lot of detail. I'm not gonna go into all that today. In fact, in a few days, there's gonna be another video of this. And if you wanna see the review and see the inside of that, watch that video. Um, once that video is released, I will go back to this video and put a link to this video. Um, also, this one comes with a platform, which is something that the other ones do not. The other ones just come with the track. Actually, the Emerald Knight does not come with the track, but the Crocodile does, and so does the Orient Express. This one actually has a feature I think is really cool to it. And let me show you, it's the architecture. So let me slide this aside. The architecture of this little bit of the station is really cool. I like the arches and how they did that. And they, they actually did a really good job of doing making that. And then they have the tile, reverse tile on top as well as I love these little light fixtures right here reminds me of the old style buildings with the um, white globe and the old incandescent light bulbs anyway I think it looks pretty cool and it does have a sign for uh, platform nine and three quarters so what you have here is a much more beefier collectors edition of a train and now that I've done that, let's look at all of them side by side. Here we have the full lineup of all four of these trains. We've got the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. We've got the Orient Express. We have the Crocodile. And we've got the Emerald Knight. 
And when you line them all up, you'll realize that the Orient Express is slightly longer than the Hogwarts Express. However, it takes two cars instead of one to get it there. If this had two cars and was equal, it would be way longer than this guy. The Crocodile, well, it's just an engine, that's it, so it's smaller. And then you see the Emerald Knight, and well, it kind of pales in comparison and scale to all of these. Well, guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications, and leave me a comment below. In addition, guys, if you're looking for ways to help the channel, there's a way, and that is head to PayPal, make a donation. If you don't have the means to make a monetary donation, that is perfectly okay. There's other ways to help the channel, and that is to head to BrickLink, buy from my store, links in the description. It's called the Chip Off the Old Block, and we have about a million pieces, and we usually ship within 24 business hours. So you get pieces for your builds, I get money for the channel. It works out win-win. Another way you can help out is by watching another video right after this video. The algorithm loves it, so please do it. Also, you guys can share a link to this video or any of my other videos on other social media platforms to help get the word out that this channel is here. All right, guys, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you on my next video.